So today I'm going to start with trust region methods. This is lecture 39 and I am Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. So again, this is a method for constraint optimization. Now there is a broad class of methods which go by the name of trust region methods. These are also known as restricted step methods. And the basic philosophy behind these methods is to try to find the search step within a certain region which is a trust region and essentially you take a current point x of k you try to determine a region of trust around it where the approximation you have developed for the objective function is valid and then to basically stay within this region of trust and to move forward in the design space in this manner. Now typically these trust region methods will rely on quadratic programming or some such type of sub problem. And the region of trust is treated using a constraint. Now one of the reasons for the development of trust region methods is that if you are dealing with any kind of quadratic approximation, which is essentially a Newton type of method, this approximation tends to break down if h is not positive definite. And the second fact is the function is very nonlinear. Now, it can happen in many cases that the function is more nonlinear than a quadratic can capture. And therefore, you need to be in a small region around the point xk where the function essentially behaves as a quadratic for the Newton method or a quadratic programming type method to work out well. Now, problems typically come when you try to minimize this quadratic function q of x in a region which is beyond the validity of this approximation. So essentially in all these type of problems, we are creating a function q of x, which is a quadratic, which approximates the actual function f of x, which is the function we are trying to minimize. And this minimization is done in a trust region round x, where this particular quadratic Taylor series expansion, which you have taken, is valid. So essentially that is all the trust region method tries to do. Now of course the first thing that you can imagine in such a method would be to define this region of trust. So here I am defining this region of trust by this particular set that is the points x such that x minus xk where x is the current point take the norm of this is less than some number h of k. Now, this h of k determines the size of the trust region. And you can see that this is dynamically changed because this is not a constant or a static value. This is dependent on k. So as k progresses, we can keep changing the size of the trust region. So essentially within this region of trust, we seek to minimize a quadratic approximation. So we essentially have this function q of delta x, which we can write out like this. So again, you have the gradient term, you have the Hessian term as before, subject to this particular bound on this movement of delta x. And therefore, this is a quadratic programming problem, and we have to solve this quadratic problem for delta x as part of the solution process using our trust region method. And now we are going to try to figure out how exactly you determine this trust region for most problems. So we solve for delta xk to calculate the actual change in the objective function. So now the actual change in the function f is delta f which is the change from function value at xk to the value at xk plus delta xk. 
Now, since you are minimizing this function, the value at the second point, which is xk plus delta xk, is going to be lower than this value at f. So essentially, this is going to be a positive number. Now, you compare this delta f with the predicted change in the objective function. And the predicted change is going to be delta q, which is again the value of x, value of f at the point xk, minus the value predicted by the quadratic approximation of the function. So again, hopefully this should be positive because your approximation should also give you a value which decreases. So now if we divide delta f by delta q, we get this factor r of k, which is known as the reliability index. And this factor essentially is used to determine as to how good the approximation is going to be. Now, of course, you are going to see here that if your approximation is perfect, then your Q of delta X would exactly match this value here and your RK would be one. But in most cases, you are going to get a value which is lesser than one. Now, the closer RK is to one, the more correctly Q will approximate the function f at xk plus delta xk. Now, if rk is small, so let's say rk is lower than some prescribed value r low, then the approximation is not good, and therefore you need to shrink the trust region, essentially reduce the trust region size. If rk is large, that is rk is greater than some prescribed value r high, then the approximation is good and the trust region should be permitted to expand in size. So these are the two possible cases which you get. And again, the choice of this R low and R high is necessary here to guide the trust region method. So the question now comes how much to move. And again, typically R low would be a number which is closer to zero than one. So we can select a number such as 0.25. R high would be a number which is closer to one. So we could select a number such as 0.75. So essentially these would guide the trust region method in terms of the reliability value R. So essentially now we are in a position to state this method as an algorithm. So you start with estimating x0, which is the starting point, and we select h0 is 1. Then we choose a small number epsilon. Calculate c and h. Stop if norm c is less than epsilon. So this is the typical stopping criteria. Now you form and solve the quadratic program to get delta xk. You find value of f at xk plus delta xk. You know the value of q from the quadratic program, and then you can calculate the value of RK. And then you update the trust region size depending on these particular situations. If RK is less than 0.25, you shrink the trust region. If RK is greater than 0.75, you expand the trust region. So you can see that here, here we are dividing by four, here we are multiplying by two, you can play around with different scenarios also, but this is a good scenario. And if uh, none of these are true, then of course we can just set hk plus one equals hk. Then we determine the next point or the new point. Now there is a peculiar case if rk is less than zero, which means your function value is actually going up as predicted by the approximation. In that case, you just set xk plus 1 is xk, which is basically you don't move forward. Set k is k plus 1 and return. So in that case, your next function value is greater than your current value, and essentially you don't want to move. Now, some of you would have realized that the trust region method precludes the need for doing a one-dimensional search. So you are doing this problem by creating a trust region rather than creating a one dimensional search. And in some way it can also be thought of an in 
exact line search type of situation which you are doing by setting this size of h and by either doubling the size or by reducing by one fourth and so on now of course if this is not the case then you update your point to the next point you get xk plus one is xk plus delta xk and then you are essentially done with this problem so we see that trust region methods are robust and insensitive to scaling they can be used with response surface methods and there are many methods in constraint nonlinear optimization beside the ones we have developed today which can be used in these problems so finally those of you who are interested in further study there is a plethora of literature out there and also commercial software has been developed for solving many design problems using these methods so i will terminate lecture 39 here i'll see you in my next video